Hey everyone, my name is Kelvin. I'm a developer and I make free tutorial content. If you like this kind of thing, consider subscribing and liking the video. And if you want to support me in other ways, you're always welcome to buy me a coffee. Everyone, today we're going to be doing a quick video on destructuring enclosure. And first I need to make a environment. So let's go to this, make a depths.eden file. And this could be empty because I'm not really going to be using it too much. But the file that I'm going to be using is user, and let's just do namespace user. And now I need to create a REPL connection. So I'll just do nREPL. You would probably have a setup with your editor. Um, I have a global alias for starting a REPL, so that's what I'm doing here. And I guess there's a new version, so that's nice. Anyways, I'm going to put that onto a different window and come back here. Now, what destructuring is, it's a way that you can pull out values from a data structure. And it's very prevalent in the JavaScript world. So you would do something like this, x, y, from an array of like one, two, three, four. I'm going to skip the commas because they're not necessary. You could also do it with objects. So something like that, the, where the right side is going to be different. Now, this technique is something that a lot of people would like to call syntactic sugar, meaning that it's not actually necessary. You get away with writing code without it. However, it's used often enough that it would be a good idea to know how to read it at the very least. Now I'm going to be using let blocks here for all of these examples, just because it's kind of an easy way to visualize things. And the first kind of destruction that we're going to go over is vector destruction. So vector. Now the name vector destruction actually applies to the part where we're pulling values out. This could actually work on any kind of sequence. So that includes lists and sometimes collections. But before we get there, let's actually visualize things. So let's first have our source vector being something like one, two, three, four. Now there are functions in closure to get the first value, the first, second, and any nth value. Now let me check. Uh, nth wants this index as the second value. So, so to get three, it'll be index of two. And then we also have a function called rest. And with rest, it'll take or it'll return a list or a sequence of everything after the first index. So just to show each one, x. Oh wait, hold on. I need to connect. All right. So x is one as expected. Y is the second value. Z here is going to be three. Remember, indexes start at zero, so the index of two is the third value. And then the rest is going to be everything from two to six. So this is how you would get values normally from a list. Also, a side note, the reason why rest returns everything except for the first is because normally you would recursively take out the first value. You end up with a smaller and smaller list until you want the rest of the actual target list that you want. Now that we got the normal way of doing it, let's show how we could get all of this from destructuring. So I'm going to clean this. And like the name suggests, vector destructuring means we're going to be using a vector to pull these out. So we have x, y, and z. And that will give us 1, 2, and 3. So once again, let's evaluate each one. So x is 1, y is 2 and z is 3. Now, if you want to skip values, you could just replace it with a underscore. And inside of closure, a underscore just means you're going to skip evaluating that thing. Now, that's all and well, but how do we get the rest of the list like we did earlier? Well, that's where you add the and sign. So here, we're going to do the rest. And this is going to be everything from the list after, was that the third index? So we're going to expect four or five and six, which we get. Now there is one last thing for vector destructuring that you may want to know. And that's the keyword as, and this will give you the entire list. So if we evaluate this, we'll get the full vector of one, two, three, four, five, and six, like so. Now, as mentioned, vector destructuring works with any sequence. So if we were to change this to a list type, getting all should give us back a list type. And if we get the individual value of x, we should still get the value of one. 
which we do. Now finally, just to hammer home, types are polymorphic. Let's change this to a map. And this is going to be a little weird to look at, but basically this map has the key of one is set to the value of two. The key of three is set to the value of four and so on. Conceptually, it's still a collection and it's still a sequence. So you can still treat it as a list or a list, but instead what you get back from destructuring is going to be the pairs. So this time if we try to get Z, this is going to be the third pairing of five and six. And then I didn't mention this earlier, but if you try to get the rest and you're at the end of the sequence, you should get no. And of course we get get all again. And that's the entire map here with the pairings with added commas because it'll be easier to read from the REPL but This now leads us into the next part, which is map destructuring. So I'm gonna set up another let block and let's make a source map. And I, I don't know, I'll just do keywords and strings. So let's do A is A, B is B, C is C. Now normally to get the value that you want, you could use get, and this will get the value for the key of and of course the shorthand, which is good to know, is to just use the keyword in front. There's a caveat here in that the shorthand only works with keywords. So let's say there's a string here. So let's do D, you can't do this because this is a invalid form. But once again, to show that A evaluates to A and B evaluates to B. So this is the normal way of doing it. Now with destructuring, you would use a map on the left side here. And the way this map is constructed can be a little confusing. But if you have a symbol on the left side, the right side is what key that you want from that map. So here we're binding the value of capital A, the string, to the symbol of A. And we're using it by hitting the key of the keyword A. Maybe I should have been more distinct with these, um, this example, but, but it still evaluates to the string of capital A. So I hope the point gets across. Now there's another shorthand here and that's to do keys. So this will target all the keywords and you can just provide the symbols. Those keywords will translate to so A, B and C. And let's format this a bit. This will still give us the string of capital A as well as B and C. So this is how you get all the keywords, but there is a small problem because we already added a new key that's not a keyword. So D here, I'm pretty sure will give us nil because that keyword doesn't exist in the map. But there's a solution to that. And the thing is we will provide a different keyword in the destructured map. So instead of D here, we'll do strings D. Yeah, there we go. And this will give us the capital D, so the, the final string. Now let's provide a symbol as the next um, key of this temporary map. And to do that, the next keyword that we could use is sims. And that's how we could pull out symbol keywords. So this is E. So those are the special keywords for getting individual values. Now there are some other keywords that provide special operations that you can do. So the first one is as, and we're just going to do full. This will provide the full map, which is all here. And the as keyword or the full map that you want to pull out. Uh, this one, I think you normally would use for debugging uh, just to see what's the entire object or map, just so you, that you know which keys or values that you could pull out. Now, the next one I want to introduce is or. And this one, you have to provide another map. So let's say we want to add a new key that we're trying to pull out and I'll just do not found. And inside the or, we're going to use the normal destructuring syntax. So not found is going to be the symbol that we want to pull out. And then the right side here is going to be the value that we're going to provide. So this way, if we try to pull out not found, we'll get the, the fallback value. But if we actually provide a not found key, and let's just call it found, this should give us the actual value from the map. Okay, so that is the basics. Now the next part is that you can mix and match and nest this. 
or you can mix and match vector destructuring and map destructuring, and you can also nest both of them. So I have to make up a complicated data structure. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's a list with two items inside. The first one is a very simple map. The second one is a more complicated map where V is a vector with a nested vector. So let's let's do this. Uh, let's say we don't care about the first value. And the second one, we're trying to pull out the hello. And we know that the second value is a map. So we're going to do map destructuring here. And I'm not going to do the keys shorthand because we actually want the inner value. And that's going to be the third value that we care about, which is a nested list. And here we want hello. And let's just give it the symbol of hello. OK, so this is kind of complicated, but so since you followed along on how I constructed this weird data structure, you should understand the things that we're skipping and then the target value that we're, we got. And all of that is coming from the combination of nested destructuring with vector and map destructuring combined. And hello should be world because we got the correct thing. Now, a word of note, um, it is probably a good idea not to destructure this deeply because your coworkers will probably hate you. So what you would want to do instead is only go maybe two layers deep maximum. Let's show an example of that. So I'm going to put that here and we'll get second map. And now we have the value of the second map available to us in the left binding. So we could destructure it from here and let's move this inner thing. And we'll call it inner vector. Did I do that right? Inner vector. Let me see this second map. Um, yeah, that's correct. Okay. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Okay, so that's the inner vector. And let's bind this. And we'll call this nested. Okay. All right. So this is a lot cleaner and easier to read. So we know that we're getting the second map. And from the second map, we're getting the inner vector. And then from the inner vector, we're getting the nested vector. And then finally from there, we have hello. And we still get the same value. This is more code technically, but it's much easier to read. And generally, this is something you would rather have than what we had earlier. Now, I've been doing all of this in that blocks, but you can also destructure within the function definitions. Um, I don't know, my function. So now we have my function, which just returns the argument. And let's do one, two, and three. So here we're providing a vector as the argument. And inside of my function, you could destructure like you did in the lab binding, except you don't do the right side. You only do the left side. So let's say we only want the second value. So index one, and then we rerun my function, we'll get two. And this also applies to map destructuring. So let's say we expect a map coming in with a key of something else. And let's, I don't know, let's just do no. Now if we run this function, we should get no back because we're pulling out the value of with the key of something else. So that was a quick video on destructuring in Clojure. I hope it helped a little bit. I know that this concept was a little confusing, not from a concept wise, but more of a syntax wise, because it's it does take a while to kind of get used to like how all this looks. But yeah, I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful.